G'day folks, I just thought I'd give you a bit of an update of the uh, workshop and what I've done so far. Um, as you can see I've moved a few things, I've got a bit more Sony gear in here now. Uh, I eventually will autopsy this, it's not very practical to have a VHS PAL um, image processor, especially without the interface, trackball and scanner. But for now it can sit there with my vintage Trinitron colour television. Um, the reason I moved all of that was so that I could weld some brackets to the side of the shed. And you'll see in a second what that's all about. Pretty good. Um, anyway, as you can see it's cluttered and it's going to get a bit of a clean out. Um, I'm going to remove all the Battenfeld proprietary stuff from that cabinet and uh, box it up for eBay. And the cabinet itself I think Jay wants so he can have that. Um, drill press needs to go because I've got Pa's old floor stand drill coming in. As I said in the DRO video, I'm also getting the mini mill, which comes on a large um, desk, like a school desk sized stand, which will fit where that one is. So that one's got to go outside. Um, the power hacksaw has to go because that's just a project which I don't have time for. I use the bandsaw at work if I've got any serious cutting to do, so it only owes me 20 bucks. I paid 20 bucks for it and I haven't really done anything to it, so yeah, it can go. Um, I'm trying to offer most of this stuff to people that want to pick it up. I don't want to have to deliver it because it's all on the Mornington Peninsula in uh, Victoria, Australia. So don't ask about shipping heavy stuff. I just don't do it anymore. Uh, same with the two Villiers engines. They need to go. I can't rem remember what's buried in there. More stuff buried. Uh, TVs I'm going to sort out. I've already scrapped a couple of them recently with broken panels. Uh, the ones with good panels, I'm just going to strip the good parts out of them and uh, set the panels aside outside. And uh, yeah, we'll get around to frying them later because I've got to get, get this milling machine in here and then I'll be happy. But until then, well, yeah, it's just stuff's got to be moved or thrown out. But yeah, it's interesting. It's busy. Uh, again, the tyre machine, I was having trouble setting up the VFD. I think I understand how these ones work now. It's not basic analog relay logic anymore. It's actually a, uh, it's like a CAN bus or something like that. I need to uh, dig digitally assign commands to the uh, input channels on it. It's got input channels and you can assign what command you want and what parameters for that command. So I've just got to spend a fair bit of time programming it. And I should be able to work it using the foot pedal, forward and reverse. It'll just be jog, but it'll have its own torque and frequency curve on it. And I'll bolt that on the back, as suggested by a friend of mine. If the VFD does blow up and catch fire, it won't kill anything inside. If... Now, I was going to throw this out, and then I just realised today, I can use this cabinet. I was going to throw it out after pulling the panel meters out of it, but hey... That's a perfectly good cabinet to bolt onto the back of it and it will have the VFD and uh, single phase power input on it. So that will be perfect. Um, yeah. Anyway, as you can see the weld is near the door for good reason. I've been putting more brackets up there and one up there which still needs more work because I have roof structure. I'm going to put these up there. <laughs> I'm going to have a uh, annex of sorts, or a, a veranda roof. And they are very strong. This one here twists a bit to the side because I'm not done welding reinforcing in there. But as you can see, they're actually a cantilever bracket. That means no posts across here, which is awesome. So it's going to be three wide. There's three frames which are going to go uh, widthways and it's going to have a fall back, a slight fall back to the gutter so I've got to get up there with the shop vac and suck all the debris out of that gutter before I uh, put anything up there but it will work very well uh, anyway that's sort of what I've been working on last weekend I haven't done any videos as such it's just one of those things I've got to get into particularly before winter sets in like it's not roasting hot out here so I can work but it's also not winter so it's not pouring rain this is a perfect time to do it and I don't want to waste too much time messing around and doing videos but anyway this needs a home work gave it to me I can give it to somebody on the peninsula if you've got a good use for it I don't want to see it just show up on eBay again but it's a uh, stone saw I do have a sliding trolley that moves it back and forth on this tank but I'd recommend reworking it a bit and just doing a bit of work on it 
but it should still run. It's a Mitsubishi side valve engine. Fairly old, like 1980s old. Yeah, five horsepower. It says Norton Villiers on it. Probably sold by Norton Villiers back then. Yeah, G501M85, five horsepower. It's old enough. It's still got good compression, it's bouncing over compression. Yeah, I'll get that going. Uh, again, it works cleaning out, so the milling machine's coming home. I'm not going to get the pallet racking that they've got, I don't have room for it. Got another heat pump. Another one of these bloody American ones which is underrated for what it actually is supposed to be rated for. This one's supposed to be single phase, 30 amps running current. Crazy. I don't know if it's single phase, I'll crack it open and find out, but the plate itself says uh, 220, 240 volt single phase. Yeah, 200 to 240, phases one, maximum fuse 70 amps, recommended uh, I think it's 40. Yeah, minimum's 41.38 amps. That's a hell of a lot of amps for single phase. Again, this is one of those things I'd like to find a home locally and fairly quick. Pick up only. This thing weighs a ton. I can't even really move it on my own. No, uh, that's about it. Plenty of evacuated glass tube heating tubes. <laughs> They're not very handy without the manifolds though. Got some decrepit old heating panels. They've got to be scrapped. They're all rotted out. Some of these tubes are actually uh, perforated. Anything that's green and blue on the underside is actually uh, rotted out and uh, punctured. They leak. There's uh, most of these like that one there. But yeah, it's stainless tubing. Lots of 40 by, I think it's 40 by 40 by 1.6 or 1.8 stainless. But these things, they look like big radio valves, but they're actually vacuum flasks. Or sort of like heat pipes. It's like a heat pipe on a CPU cooler. This one here got broken, but as you can see, they put the outer under in a complete vacuum, and any infrared that gets caught in there can't get out. So whatever's on the inside absorbs all of it. In this case, water. So yeah, thermal currents cycle water through it. They're all angled downwards like that. They just sit on the roof on an angle facing down. Cold water goes in at the bottom, hot water comes out at the top. Heat pipes. And there are literally a hundred of them. Some of them are broken, but there are quite a lot of good ones. So I'll probably grab a nice bundle of them and do something interesting with them one day, or I don't know, give them away, throw them out. Don't ask about shipping, we've already tried shipping them and they go pop. <laughs> we've, broke, we've lost more than we've actually successfully sold, so we, I think we're abandoning, abandoning that idea. Yeah. Interesting stuff, but not practical. Not really practical at all. There's a table for the stone saw. The wheels are all degraded and falling apart. It all needs to be re re rebuilt, essentially. Got those wheels right on the sides of that uh, tank there and you just sort of slide it back and forth and just gently cut through it. You do a decent sized paver with it. Like 16 inch paver or bigger. Anyway, here's a bit of an update for now. Things are a bit hectic. I don't have an awful lot of time, but work's actually slowing down now, so it'll mean I can get out on Fridays, that sort of stuff, visit the scrapyard more, pick up more goodies, and then not have time to deal with them. But who cares? <laughs> We're having fun. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for more. I've got way more to do in here. I need local people who are willing to come and pick stuff up, and I can do a real good deal, if not just give it away. Um, some things aren't going, but need local geeks, trustworthy people who aren't going to um, just pick stuff up and throw it on eBay, who can come and get it. Because I'm down on the Mornington Peninsula, as you know. I'm not giving specific in details to people unless I really particularly know you. But I'm sure I can arrange some things. It's just one of those things. I don't want the whole world to know where I am, but I don't mind helping certain people, particularly regular viewers and people who I recognise. I've got no problem with that. It's just oddball stuff I'm a bit careful of. 
So, yeah, it's a bit of a shame. I would like to have an open day where I can just sell stuff for basically scrap value and help other geeks out because, yeah, I'm, I'm not in this to make an absolute profit or anything like that. I'd rather see stuff be given or at least sold for what I paid for it to people who can really use it and have fun with it because I don't have an awful lot of time to do that, unfortunately. So, yeah, it's just one of those things. The other option is, well, I basically chuck it out. I don't, have, don't really have time to deal with eBay or anything like that. And again, I know some people, one of my subscribers has suggested I sell plasma TV boards and stuff on eBay, but I think eBay Australia actually uh, charge a minimum fee on everything. Work's been trying it with obsolete equipment and parts, and they're just getting stung with fees left, right and centre, so I've really got to look into that. There's no point in putting a board like this on for 10 bucks, no reserve, as an untested rebuildable uh, if I'm going to get stung 5 bucks for posting it. There's no point. Um, if it was all free listing and no, no, no posting fees, that would be fine, but I don't think it's the case in Australia. I've really got to look into that because I've got a ton of plasma boards that I'm probably never going to use and don't, simply haven't tested, so you put them on for 20 bucks each as untested suitable for testing or rebuild no reserve and just go for it and people do snap them up apparently but it's got to be worth it in the end like no massive fees or anything like that for posting it anyway that's my ramble that's my rant for the day hope everyone's enjoying themselves and uh stay tuned for more lots more by the looks of it <laughs>